Hi, and welcome back to our course. And in section three, we're going to be discussing creating a project backlog. So in this section, we will look at examining the requirement types that are available in TFS. We'll actually go about creating a product backlog. We'll create a requirement hierarchy using features. And lastly, we'll talk about the importance of acceptance criteria. So in video one, we're going to start talking about the examination of requirement types. In this video, we are going to look at user stories, product backlog items, and requirements. So let's start out with user stories. User stories are available in the Agile process in TFS. And how you go about ranking or deciding how big is a user story is by using what they call story points. So you can come up with like a Fibonacci sequence a lot of teams use, some indicator that this is a certain size based on a number. Some folks actually take hours and turn them into points. So every, three, every point would be three hours or four hours. So maybe if there's a story point of two, that's an eight hour task. So it just, again, it all depends on what we're fixed for you, we do. It all depends on what works for your company. But again, story points are just a sizing mechanism. Next, we'll talk about product backlog items. They're available in the scrum process. And instead of using points, we use what we call effort. How big is this? How much effort is it going to take for us to complete this? And again, very much like in the Agile project, we can actually go and use hours against points. So they'll set up the hours as like three hours equal one effort or two, eight hours equal two effort and so on and so forth. So we have a way to actually set up Fibonacci sequence or some way to set up effort that we're gonna have. And this tells the team about how big this product backlog item is. And lastly, we're gonna talk about requirements. Requirements are based in the CMMI process template. And they go off what we call sizing. So how, what's the size of your requirement? Again, it could be a one, two, three, a Fibonacci sequence, whatever you care it to be. But one other step that you can take with the requirements is actually listing out the type. So you have types like functional or architectural or interface. There's a list of types that we'll show you later on in the video on how we can actually go about typing our particular requirement in CMMI. Let's go look at the requirement types. Okay, so I'm back here in TFS and I wanna start looking at the requirement types. I'm in an Agile project and I have user stories listed out on the screen there in the center. I'm going to double click on one of those user stories and that's going to open the user story dialog that I can go and fill out. If you'll notice over here on the far right, we have the story points. Again, story points are an estimated size of how long it's going to take for us to implement this. What's the effort it's going to take? Story points are all about how big is this? How much time is it going to take? So a lot of times, like I stated earlier, Companies will actually put hours around their story points. Four hours equal one story point, eight hours equal two, so on and so forth. That's how we set up story points in Agile and TFS. So let's go on and look at the product backlog items. All right, here I am in TFS and I want to look at the product backlog items. You'll see here in the center of the screen I have one. I'm going to double click to open that one. You'll notice it looks a lot different than the Agile template did. And we have over here towards the center on the right side is the effort. How much effort is it going to take for us to implement this particular item? Again, that can be a Fibonacci sequence. It could be a number related to hours. So for example, one point, one effort point equals four hours of work or two effort points equal eight hours of work. Again, it's all up to the company to decide what's work or the team actually to decide what's going to be best for, you know, our team to, to effort these and make sure that we understand the size of what we're going to create here. So with that, let's go look at the requirement types. So I'm in my CMMI project now. And you'll notice here that we have one requirement. I'm going to double click that to open that one. You'll notice here on the far right, we have the planning section. And in the planning section, we have a size. So we're going to they say that's a size two. Again, just a number, but it shows the organization how big is this. We have, it's, this again could be hours against points. So again, it could be four hours equal one point, eight hours equal two points, so on and so forth. 
But if we scroll down here a little bit, you'll notice the classification area. And in there we have the type. So you can notice here now that we have a few different types available to us. Interface, functional, feature, operational, quality of service. That's just an extra step we can add into the requirement that we're creating in CMMI. Because CMMI requires more information, we can actually set that type right there. And that's it. We've now created the requirement type. I'm going to save and close this. And now we have a particular requirement type with a functional option. Okay, so let's wrap up now on the requirement types. In this particular video, we talked about the user stories, product backlog items or PBIs, and requirements.